this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Um, it wasn't clear yet, but you, you were the chief of police in the Ottawa Police Service um, for the Freedom Convoy, and uh, which included, um, and you had that position up until the Emergency Act was invoked the day at the, until the day after the Emergency Act was invoked on February 15th. Is that correct? correct, sir? So, in the weeks in advance of the arrival of the Freedom Convoy uh, in Ottawa, did convoy organizers seek permissions and direction from Ottawa Police Service and or the City of Ottawa on where and how to park in the downtown core? Prior to the arrival, there were negotiations and communications between some of the convoy elements. Uh, that Those communications included uh, efforts from the Ontario Provincial Police and, yes, from the Ottawa Police Service, uh, specifically our police liaison teams. So in other words, they were seeking permission on where to park, and that permission from the city and from the Ottawa Police Service was provided to them, which included um, emergency lanes uh, on Wellington and side streets, et cetera. Is that correct? Uh, permissions is a word that I wouldn't normally use. There were communications and negotiations around how best to reduce the public safety impact of such a large gathering and demonstration in the city, and there were some successful and constructive efforts on both parties, both the police services and the organizers. Would it be fair to suggest, uh, sir, that uh, throughout the the protesters being here, the Freedom Convoy, um, members of the OPS uh, and the City of Ottawa, from what I understand, have continued had, had continued dialogue and communication with uh, organizers of that protest. Dialogue and communication continued from the weeks before all the way through, to my understanding, to my last day in office, anyway. Good. So, which is important, and I'll get to that in a minute. But as the convoy protests uh, continued, obviously, uh, given your background and experience, you and your team developed operational plans to how to best to manage and and disperse uh, the protest. Is that correct? Ultimately, plans were updated on a regular basis, um, and the ultimate goal was to end safely and successfully the events in here here in Ottawa. Okay. So then, you appeared before, and I'm sure, Mr. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brock will get into the, the details of those plans, but it, it, you appeared before another parliamentary committee this spring where you said um, that you had asked the federal government for, and I quote, literally everything that we could think of, end quote. Now, did that include a request from the government to invoke the Emergencies Act? There were no explicit conversations that I had okay. with the levels of government in regarding the declarations of Emergency Act at all three levels. Did anyone else within your uh, Ottawa Police Service ask for the government to invoke the Emergencies Act? Sorry, one correction my former answer. Uh, we did have conversations with the, with the City of Ottawa around their emergency, but not the other two levels of government. Okay. Can you just repeat your question for me, sir? Did anyone else within your police service uh, ask the, the federal government to invoke the Emergencies Act that you're aware not of? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Now, what support did your police service request from the federal government? Um, during the convoy protest, and did the federal government provide you with the resources you requested and um, in order for you to be maintaining order in Ottawa? Uh, the, two, the, the primary request that I made on a regular basis, a uh, continual basis, was resources, particularly more police officers and police trained personnel, uh, secondarily access to tow trucks, predictable access to a large number of officers, 1,800, and access to predictable, sustainable levels of, of heavy tow trucks for that yes sir did the government so you asked for that did the government provide you um, any indication that that was something that you were going to receive we received supports from all uh, from both provincial and federal governments right from the beginning um, outreached uh, prior to the arrival we received OPP officers RCMP officers and we had that support throughout after the official request for 1,800, there was an, a greater level of integration within our command structure, and we started to see a greater inflow of those resources, particularly over the last three to four days of my time in office, sir. Now, did, did, was there any shortcomings in what you requested? Um, I wish I could have got it all within hours, but there are huge logistical challenges to gather officers from across the country that is actually experiencing a national security crisis with locations across the country. I believe our partners did their very best, our policing partners, particularly the OPP and RCMP, did their very best. So with, your, with your knowledge and experience, uh, Mr. Soli, have you been provided with the resources that you requested in a timely way uh, and when requested? Would you have been able to clear the protesters in downtown Ottawa using the usual normal existing um, legal authorities without the use of the Emergencies Act? The plan that was in place on February 9th was designed without the declarations of the Provincial or Federal Emergencies Act. 
Um, that said, uh, components within both of those declarations were incredibly helpful to accelerate and safely end. You're right. Mr. Mott, I'm sorry your five minutes um, is up. So, uh, Mr. Slowly, you had indicated to some of my colleagues' questions, and I just wanted to clarify. You indicated that you had tow trucks that were available to you. It wasn't safe to deploy them without the Emergencies Act. Wasn't safe to deploy them in certain areas of the yeah, theater, particularly so, the red so, zone. We deployed them in other areas. Right, but but the thing is that you had them; and they were available to you. You didn't need the Emergencies Act to get them. That's I, number one. Number no, two. Sorry, just to be clear, we did not have sufficient. Fair enough. Trucks but and but you had them. Predictable resources. We you had, had them. We had a so small you number. you didn't need the Emergencies Act either to access resources. I know they. No, they, sorry, sir. Uh, we we did. We did not have resources on scale for the plans that we had in place. Right, but you had resources because you started clearing the streets on, and your plan, because you, you, your, your exact words were you stated that you were planning was in a better place on February 9th and 10th and 11th and 12th and 13th, as you started executing the plan before the Emergencies Act came in, you had hundreds of additional. In fact, you probably had about around 1,500 from what I was told before the Emergencies Act was invoked. No, that's But not, it was all cleared up before the not Emergencies correct, Act sir. Those came, numbers not? are not correct. The resources you're describing... Part of the disinformation, unfortunately, that was flowing around this city were large numbers of resources that we simply did not have and okay. and didn't even get to those so, numbers but, while I was this, still in the office. The swearing in of individuals can happen, you know, you can put a couple hundred people in a room and you can swear them in all at once. You don't need the Emergencies Act to swear people in. Is that correct? Uh, there are different techniques for swearing right. people in, yes, okay. sir. So, I just, yeah, so you don't need the Emergencies Act is, is my, my point. I want to go back to uh, Mr. Brock's uh, comment. Um, and you didn't answer specifically because his time ran out about the uh, incendiary rhetoric and divisive language used by our Prime Minister. But you've been in law enforcement for 30 years. Uh, you've dealt with the odd protest or two, as you've indicated, uh, of course, and we thank you for that. Has it not been your experience that when you have a dedicated and committed protest base, if the person or organization that they're protesting against or they want to be listened to by taunts them or insults them, surely that's more than likely to escalate the agitation and double down on the commitment rather than convincing a protester to walk away? Again, I, I, I can't put myself into the mindset of any group of the demonstrators and protesters that I've dealt with over 30 years. There are different things that triggered people and groups for different reasons. Human nature being human nature, um, honey usually uh, <laughs> is, is more attractive than other things. Um, now, I, I, want, I want to... Uh, I want to take you to some political uh, discourse that may have gone on. Your, your, your previous um, Ottawa Police Services Board Chair, Diane Dean, suggested that uh, Emergency Preparedness Minister Bill Blair uh, might have had an axe to grind with you, um, le le leading to the, the weeks-long federal foot-dragging when it came to accessing uh, or answering your requests for additional resources. Do you share that perspective at all? Just yes or no? No. Okay. Is there anything, any truth to it at all? I can't get engaged in conjecture, sir. Sorry. Okay. But in the, the day before the Emergencies Act was invoked, Mr. Blair did a television interview, and he said, and I quote, we all need the police to do their job. Do you believe that uh, you were doing your job? And how do, you, uh, how do you react to him slamming you like he did? I know I was doing my job. I can't uh, state what the intent was of the minister's comments, sir. But what, how, what's your take? I mean, I mean you... you you obviously didn't feel good. If I was in your shoes when the minister said that, I'd become an unglued on him because he didn't provide me what I needed. Um, but I, I appreciate your political correctness. Um, you, uh, you are... Um, is there any truth to the suggestion that when he was the Toronto police chief, you were the deputy chief for the most of the time that he was there, there were, was there anything going on between the two of you that would prevent him from... Uh, um, you know, from from treating you the way you needed to be treated here in a prejudicial way as far as you not getting the resources you wanted? You said it, sir. I was a deputy chief for a significant tenure of Chief Blair's time, and I was given some of the biggest operational responsibilities during that time. On the Friday before the Emergencies Act was actually uh, invoked, the Prime Minister said that he did not, and I quote, accept the contention that you had exhausted the resources available to you. Now, um, Mr. Slowly, the Prime Minister, did he know what he was talking about? Again, did, did I'm, not, you have the, I'm not aware of a statement like that. I can tell you that we exhausted every resource we possibly could put on the field, 
and put our people through more than they humanly should have been put through. Did you? Um, Sorry, Mr. Marsh, this is up. Was that on 1.5 time or was that on regular time? <laughs> regular time, sir. Oh.